And away we go. All right. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to the fall semester of uh, 2024. I have to remember what year it is. So there we go. Uh, my name is Astrid Northrup, and I am a professor of engineering science, uh, mathematics, and I'm also division chair for STEM. So what that really means for you is I am always in this building. Uh, so you can find me anytime that you want. But the class that we are specifically in is Intro to Engineering Problem Solving. Um, the Moodle page, I just opened it up about half hour ago. So it's available to you, uh, whenever you whenever you are interested and everything will be here. I keep every single thing on the Moodle page. So if it's not there, you don't have to do it. So that's the, that's the good news. Um, one of my students a few years ago had said, and I thought this was just such a cool thing, but he said um, he always remembered with my classes, submit for sub submit for success. So anytime you see the little, um, this little icon, it means there's something that you have to do. Um, I'm gonna remove these two announcements, but uh, when we have, we do have an introduction as well. That's not typical, but when you see the word submit, um, there's, there, that, that's something that you have to turn in. And this is just introduction, just because we can get to know each other a little bit and you can get to know your classmates. Uh, everybody in here will be an engineering major. It would be quite unusual that anyone who's not an engineering major would be in this class. So, um, so that's another, well, I don't know, it's nice to meet other people too, but it's nice to have just engineers as well. All right, so let's take a look at the syllabus. Uh, I'll tell you how the class is gonna run and then I'll tell you about the content and then you can ask me any questions. And you have a very short, non-content driven assignment uh, today. But basically, we'll meet in here two days a week, Monday and Wednesday at nine. And then we just meet uh, right over here to the north in 137, which is a computer lab on Monday afternoons. And uh, anytime that you wish to join by Zoom, the Zoom link is on the schedule. It's on, the, it's on the Moodle page, it's also on the syllabus. Um, and you're always welcome to do that. So um, even in lab, it's really not difficult. It depends on how you set up your software on your personal computer, but you're welcome to join from Zoom or come join me and we'll meet face to face. Um, my name, like I said, is Astrid Northrup. Uh, in terms of background, I have a bachelor's and master's degrees in petroleum engineering. I have a certificate in land surveying and certificate in computer science, and I have a PhD in science education with a minor in quantitative research methods, which is just different than qualitative, which means how people feel about things, and quantitative is about processing data, which that's what engineers like to do better. So um, anyway, my office is right down the hall, SM 126. I feel like I'm there quite a bit. Uh, so you can find me any time that you want to. Uh, the other thing is, and I don't think I put the link up here. I have a class Zoom link, but let me stop the share for just a second. Let me see if I can find this. Um, I also, I did not put it up here and I apologize. I have a Calendly program, which if you need to meet with me, uh, you can go through Calendly and schedule. It's very simple. Let me show you what it looks like. Um, and you can just that way, um, if you if you if you link to my calendar through Calendly, uh, then what you can do is you can just know that you have a dedicated time for when we're gonna meet. Um, instead of going through this, I'll just put it up on my Moodle page in just a few minutes here. I didn't even realize it was gone. Anyway, so uh, you can meet me in my office randomly. You can meet me in class. You can take some time with me in lab. Or if you want some dedicated time, all you have to do is just set up a link on Calendly and we'll have a half hour together. Calendly will default to being a Zoom meeting, but if you want to meet me face to face, just send me an email or a text and say, I would like to Zoom or I would like to, I would not like to Zoom. Uh, I also keep my, my cell phone number on here. And if you text me, I'll get to it right away. Email. Don't please don't leave a voicemail. I tell people I haven't picked up my voicemail since I think 1997. So don't, it's, I don't even know what it is. So, but if you text me, I will get to it right away. So what are we gonna do in this class? This is a really great class because there are so many things that we get to approach in here. And basically the difference between 
engineering, computing, and computer science is engineers use computing tools as tools. We use compute, we use um, programming environments. We use Excel spreadsheets. You probably used Excel spreadsheets a little bit in your past. We'll take it to a whole other level. You will not believe what Excel can do for us, uh, but it's always is a tool. We always have a problem solved. And part of that solution is doing something like with repetitive calculations or things that we want to change really quickly. Uh, we definitely want to use a, a tool so that we don't have to keep doing things over and over again on, on the green paper, the famous, famous green paper. All right, so uh, so it's just, it, we use it as a tool. So the course description, I use the computers in solving a wide variety of engineering and science-oriented problems. It could include documentation, documentation or report writing, uh, computing tools for writing reports and presenting data in graphical form, uh, equation solving and manipulation of tabular data. And a prerequisite is that you are currently in Calc 1 or that you've already taken Calc 1. So either one is, is fine. So what that really means is you have to be through college algebra and trig in order to be in this class. Um, we have two, we're going to use two different programming environments. We're going to use a program called MATLAB, which um, it's almost like a stereotype that engineers love MATLAB above all other things. So it's a good thing to get acquainted with. In the past, I've used it for half of a semester and then we switch over to Excel. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to use it for that much. We'll see. I'm still trying to parse that out. So we may use MATLAB quite a bit less than that. By the middle of the semester, we are going to be using this textbook, which is Spreadsheet Tools for Engineers. Some of the pages just dropped out. Uh, but anyway, Spreadsheet Tools for Engineers is available um, online. The MATLAB programming environment is free from a company called MathWorks. And one of your first assignments will be to set yourself up with MATLAB. So, and if it's not free, I don't want you to do it. Don't pay money for MATLAB because you don't need it for more than about six weeks. So uh, you, sh you should be able to do the onboarding and do everything you need to do. All right, so how are your grades determined in here? Um, I always go for no surprises. I want you to know every second of every semester what your grade is up to that point. Um, and it's all quantitative. 25% is your homework, 25% is your lab assignments and programs, 25% uh, is your midterm exam, and 25% is your final exam. And if you have a 90, you're guaranteed an A, and if you have an 80, you're guaranteed a B. Um, I do reserve the right to round down. So in other words, if somebody has an 89.6, they may get an A, they may get an A minus, they may get a B plus could under weird circumstances get a B, but that would be really strange, but I will never round down. If you have a 90.0000, you get an A, that's it. And I can't give you an A plus. Although I've had some people who've done A plus work, I can't, there's not an A plus available to me to give to you. So um, so I will, I will do that. Now, the homework policy, all of your homework has to be scanned and submitted through Moodle. Um, please write it to me, generally speaking, in a PDF or a, or a JPEG file. The, if you have an Apple phone, it will default to a file which has an HEIC extension. Can't read them. I mean, I'm sure you did some great work, but I will never see it. So please don't send me an HEIC. If you do, I'll have to send it back to you. Also, except under dire circumstance, don't email it to me. Okay, put it through Moodle so that I have it. But the... All of my assignments, I love to have come in on this green paper, which is called engineering comp paper. Um, I keep reams of it outside of my office and you are welcome to take a tablet and then you can submit your homework on this. But so you'll write out your homework, put your name, blah, 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 and then you'll, su you'll submit it on this. Now, when we use um, MATLAB, you cannot submit it obviously there because you have to show me a working program. So I have a MATLAB working environment, you'll have a MATLAB working environment. And so you can send it to me as a MATLAB program or you can just copy it and put it in a document that I can then copy and paste into my MATLAB environment. And either one of those things work, but don't send me a PDF of a MATLAB file because I, <laughs> Well, I guess you could, and I can copy and paste it, but don't send me something that I can't, I don't, I don't want to type in your work again is what I'm getting at. Um, but anyway, everything will be, everything will be handled in that particular way. 
Um, I don't put the uh, universal syllabus information on my syllabi because you can click here and it will just tell you if you have any problems, um, if you have a disability that needs to be taken care of, if you need me to do something to accommodate you in a classroom, uh, everything will be there. And that is live. So computer services keeps it up to date and I don't have to worry about giving you old information. All right. So at this point, what I hope you'll get away from this class is um, I'll have everything on Moodle. I'm always available through some manner, whether it's face-to-face, -face, texting, or Zoom, um, or in the class. So please, if you start running into problems, let me know. Um, I think with engineering, I think most engineering students have had a successful experience in K-12. So it's usually not like there's a big confidence barrier. Uh, but if there if there's something that troubles you, I'll also say I've, every engineer I've known, um, including people, including my own experience in school, including other people I've gone to school with and all the students I've taught over the years, there may be something somewhere along the line that just does not come naturally to you. And the way that you get through that is just to work a little bit harder. And there's kind of four steps to working hard. Um, one is to come to class. Uh, first primary, absolute, please come to class. The second one is to do your homework. The third one is to take your tests. And the fourth one is when one through three don't work, to get a hold of your instructor and make sure that I help you because that's what I'm here for. I mean, I can deliver content by recording lectures and sticking them up on web page, which I do anyway, but the real function of student-teacher relationship is for me to help you uh, and to sort of identify what you're particularly having trouble with. So. Hopefully, you guys will be the ones who don't have something that eats your lunch at some point. But like I said, most people do. Um, I always tell a story with myself because when I was back in engineering school, I always did very well with math and physics um, and all my lab sciences, but I really had trouble with geology and I still do. Actually, my husband's a geologist, so I just quit. He just does everything, so I don't even think about it. But I don't see shades of gray very well. And when you're looking at rocks, looking at shades of gray becomes a big deal. So I would just get frustrated and, and quit. So, but I ended up, um, having trouble with it, and um, I got my first C in a geology course, and it was a C that I had worked really hard for, but later on, I started getting A's in geology, not because I was a good geology, not a good geologist, but I became a good geology student, so that's that's not necessarily the most grand example, but you can still do it, even if it's not your first love, and even if it's not your forte, uh, keep your eye on the prize, and if something if something is hard, just work a little harder and you will win because that's how it goes, which is really cool. Anyway, um, so having said all of that, uh, we don't need, like I said, we do not need a textbook until um, until the middle of the semester or maybe six weeks in. So you have a chance to go bargain shopping. Uh, what we're going to be doing uh, for our next class, which will be Monday morning, is um, I want you to start this onboarding program for MATLAB, which I'm gonna bring up in just a minute. And I would like you to uh, introduce yourself. And then I would also like you to submit a short document that just tells me how are you going to access Excel and how are you going to access MATLAB? That means you need to spend a little bit of time crashing around and finding out. Now, the other thing is that's not due by Monday morning, that's due by Monday night. So if you have trouble with that and you're not able to do that, we can we can work on it in lab on Monday because otherwise we're just gonna be working on onboarding. All right, so now let's talk a little bit more about what is this MATLAB? All right, so if you, yes, there we are. If you are on the Northwest College system, it is possible that you will have an icon that looks like this. It's a three-dimensional graph. And if it, if you have it and it works, um, you'll be able to access MATLAB from your computer. If not, I'm gonna show you how to access it from the just a general internet. But basically what MATLAB will do is bring up an environment that you can program in, you can write MATLAB code, and, um, and you'll have everything available to you. But see, mine is over here. It's showing up over here for some reason. 
There we go. <laughs> I don't know why that happened, but okay. Um, so anyway, this is just this is just a Matt Lab. What is this program? Do you suppose? Oh, yeah, this is an easy little program. It just uh, takes a number, you can input a number, and then it multiplies that number by five and adds four to it. So that was just like a little quiz. Um, anyway. So you'll you'll write your code here, but it looks a little concerning at this point uh, because if you've never seen MATLAB, what it, does any of this mean? So the thing that we're going to do for our first pieces of the puzzle um, are we're going to do this onboarding system for MATLAB, and you may be able to access it from your computer, or you may have to download MathWorks. But the MATLAB on-ramp we'll be working on for a couple of weeks, and you'll see that there are modules that range from five minutes to about 20 minutes long. So over the course of the next two or three weeks, we're going to do all of these modules. And by then you will be very conversant with MATLAB and it's a little bit interactive. So it's, um, it's easy to do. Mine just say 100% because I've already done them. So I wanted to make sure that everything was good. So you can do it with start course, or you can do it with course overview. So one of your first things will be getting into this and being able to access that onboard for free, because once again, I don't want anybody paying for this, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you wanna start the module and it'll pick up where you left off, if you have, um, if you start it and you're not able to finish it, it'll, it'll do this and we will do this in lab also. But so you get little, I won't play them right now, but you get little videos and then you have a little exercise that's an interactive exercise and um, it will teach you all of the basics of MATLAB. And by the time you get through, you'll be ready to write some programs. At the same time in lecture, we'll start talking about some engineering problems that we're gonna solve using MATLAB. So we're probably the first one that we do uh, is one that I used last year. So you definitely wanna do it on your own. You don't wanna borrow it from your friends if they were here last year, but it's about a temperature conversion scale. So we'll talk about the importance of why we need to be able to do that what the exact uh, specifications are, and we'll do the problem by hand, and then we'll write it in MATLAB. Then later on, we'll write it in Excel as well. So that's kind of where we're gonna go. All right, so the last piece of the puzzle I wanted to show you today is the schedule for our time together. And what I've done is I've gone through Wednesday is today, Monday and Monday, so that we have Monday lecture, Monday lab, then Wednesday, Monday, Monday, and what class period it is and how we're gonna meet. Now, I only have it down through um, uh, right here through the 16th of September, and then everything else is to be determined. So I'll fill those in as we go. Basically, we will almost always meet face-to-face -face, or you have that option of Zooming with me. Um, but occasionally I'll be off campus. And so that's when there's an async. So in other words, you can always be async, but that's kind of like when I'll be asynchronous. So, uh, for example, I will not be here on Wednesday, August 28th. So I'll do an asynchronous video. It'll be posted up to MATLAB or excuse me, MATLAB. It'll be posted up to Moodle and you'll be able to access it from there. And then I'll also be gone on, uh, September 16th. So our lab and our lecture will be asynchronous that day. So what that really means for lab is I'm not going to be online with you um, because I have some meetings that I have to attend. And, um, but if you have, but you can work on your stuff at that time or at other times. And then if you have questions, you can just email me or send me a text and I'll get back to you. All right. So everything will be laid out, like I said, and, um, We've got, I've got stuff laid out for this week and next week. The lecture that I'm doing right now will be posted to Moodle so that you'll have access to that as well. And then you'll see that by Friday, August 30th, um, this is 12 a.m., but I'll fix that. It just has to be 11.59 p.m. where it doesn't work correctly. It actually goes back to the day before, but you'll need to have completed those first five sections of the MATLAB onboarding. Um, and if you look at that, I don't even know where you are. There you are. Um, if we do that, there we go. That would be 
five plus 20 plus 15 plus 15 plus 15. So that's about 45, uh, 55, 65, about an hour and 10 minutes worth of work. So, and those are estimates. You may take a little longer or a little shorter, depending on how comfortable you are with the material. All right. So do you guys have any questions for me at this point? All right, so you'll notice, uh, like I said, um, and that's it for today, we're just gonna call it a day, but when you look at my office number and my phone number, when you look at my office hours, I don't have like Tuesday at four from four to six or whatever, it's just on demand. So that means um, text me or Calendly, put a cal send me a Calendly message or just show up at my office, okay? And uh, and we'll, we'll make sure you're all squared away. All right. Well, thank you guys. I'm going to go ahead and stop my uh, recording.